Both of these teams recorded bonus point victories on match day one. This game at Twickenham would be a vital one for their title aspirations. Danny Kerr became England's most capped scrum half, making his 78th appearance. Wales coach Warren Gatland named an unchanged 15 after a scintillating victory over Scotland, but he was forced to replace Lee Halfpenny, who was a late withdrawal with a foot infection. Gareth Anscombe took over at number 15. The home sides, looking for a record 15th consecutive home win in the Championship, were quickly out of the traps, and Owen Farrell can claim a lot of credit for the opening score. The Saracens man produced a perfect kick, and Johnny May was quick enough to profit. It was May's 11th try for England, and it gave Eddie Jones' men the perfect start in tricky conditions. Farrell was off target with the conversion attempt, but England had a five points to no score lead. Jones had loaded the pressure on Rhys Patchell with comments in the build-up to the game, and the Welsh number 10 missed a kick at the posts from close to halfway in the seventh minute. And midway through the first half, England extended their lead. Again, May was the scorer. As they threatened in the Welsh 22, Farrell threw it wide to Joe Launchbury, who did superbly to collect the ball high before a magical one-handed pass back inside for May to slide over for the score. Launchbury's contribution was huge, and May couldn't be stopped. Farrell landed the conversion to move England 12-0 ahead. Wales were finding it hard to build momentum in the opening quarter, but playing with a penalty advantage, they came very close to getting their first try of the game. Patchell chipped it into the corner. The ball came off Evans' knee, but did Anscombe, under pressure from Anthony Watson, get downward pressure? The TMO, Glenn Newman, was called upon, and he deemed that Anscombe didn't clearly ground the ball, and the decision was no try. But they had the consolation of Clay coming back for the earlier penalty and Patchell slotted it over for 12 points to three and that's how it stayed until half-time. It was a bruising encounter with openings few and far between but Aaron Shingler produced a moment of magic to burst through the English defence before opting to chip ahead when he may have been better to use Gareth Davies who was there in support. But unfortunately for the Welsh, it came to naught in the end. Scores were in short supply, but Wales came agonisingly close just past the hour mark. Anscombe jinked one way and then the other to get things going before feeding the ball to the left-hand side. Shingler and Parks were involved before Ken Owens found George North, who in turn sent Scott Williams away. The Scarlet Centre looked set to score before a world-class tackle from Sam Underhill forced him into touch just short of the line. A brilliant break from Wales, ended by a brilliant tackle to keep it at 12-3. England were looking to make it 25 wins in 26 internationals, and with a nine-point advantage, they were in the driving seat for most of the second half with defence as well on top. With time running out, Wales almost came up with the moment of inspiration required to unlock the English rearguard. George North danced down the right wing before feeding inside. It was great movement of the ball by the Welshman. Anscombe, who had a good game at full back and then fly half once Patchell was substituted, again showed that his pace could cause problems. Wales managed to recycle possession. Win Jones driving forward before Alla Davies found Parks who chipped ahead, but unfortunately for Warren Gatlin's men, Steph Evans couldn't keep it in and the chance was gone. Play was brought back for an earlier infringement and Anscombe kicked the three points to bring Wales to within six points and a converted try of victory. With the clock past 80, Wales had one last chance, but having gone through the phases in their own half, the men in red were unable to gain a foothold in the English half. When they lost it under pressure from Underhill in midfield, England had hung on for a six-point win. It had been a real battle and a narrow win for the men in white. Eddie Jones's men now have two away matches to come against Scotland and France. Wales travelled to Dublin looking to get back to winning ways. At Twickenham, after a hard-fought encounter, it finished England 12, Wales 6.